Hello and welcome to a special edition of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be doing a special custom makeover on this number 24C Rolls Royce Silver Shadow which came out in 1967. What I thought I'd do for a change and as a bit of an experiment is attempt to cover this Rolls Royce in gold leaf. This could possibly be a first in the history of Matchbox models. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to give it my best shot. So this one, as usual, is a bit shabby. The base is held on with one rivet and a tongue at the front. All tyres are missing. The paint is heavily chipped. This is the original colour paint. It is a burgundy metallic red. But as I said, I'm going to strip this down and attempt to put some gold leaf on it. It's got a number plate on the back there, which is quite cleanly cast. The doors don't open, but the boot does but the boot has these horrible holes in it which makes it look a little bit unrealistic to my mind. Still, to start this thing off as always I've got to separate this model, take the old paint off and prepare it for the gold leaf. As for the rivet on the back there you can see it's very shallow if I was to drill into it, I'd probably punch a hole right through the model and into the boot. And I wouldn't be able to use a screw to put it back together anyway. So I'm going to try out this new toy I bought. It's a Ryobi Dremel, but it's got a snake-like spring link on it so that I can use it as a pencil and I have more control over it. I'm going to use this little grinding ball attachment to take down the edge of that rivet post and prise the base off. It's not a bad little unit this one, you can even store your tools in there. So here we go, I've adjusted the speed and I'm loving this tool already because you have so much control over it rather than wielding one of those rather f chubby uh, Dremels. I mean, I still use mine from time to time, probably, to do some cut-off jobs. But I'm going to experiment with this from now on. So that's done quite a nice job on that, and no damage to the model. So, in theory, if I just leave her in here like this, with a small flat-bladed screwdriver, as I suspected, the base comes off quite easily. Uh, didn't distort, didn't damage the model. So that's the first win for today. I'm happy with that. Now this little plastic piece here is a common component in these little cars. It's a suspension strip. And as I'm attempt to pull it out, I look here and there's a huge cocoon of spiders eggs nested in there which makes me always a little bit queasy because these things can lay dormant for ages I believe and then all the little baby spiders can come out thankfully that one seems to have either hatched and been vacated or maybe they died and shriveled up years ago who knows but it's still pretty yucky and now the interior has got some more web on it there so a whole family of spiders are probably living in here at one time. <laughs> living in luxury in a Rolls Royce. But I've got that suspension strip off and I'm just noting that those two prongs go to the rear. So because it's it's not a symmetrical item. Have a look at some of the detail here. It's a bit grotty. Uh, limited detail, some ribbing on the seats, steering wheel, no instruments. But you can't really see much through those window apertures anyway when the model's together. Interestingly, this centerpiece is a separate casting, which you would have thought would have been a little bit awkward why they didn't just cast it on the front and paint it silver like they usually do. Don't know, maybe this was special because it's a Rolls Royce. So using my little grinding ball tip again, Perfect for this little job, because those rivets are the size of tack heads. You can see only a couple of mil. And uh, once again, the old... Um, you can't live without a small flat bladed screwdriver doing this hobby. Uh, let me know if you think I'm wrong, but 
It's the most used tool I've got, I think. Great for prizing little bits apart like that. Nice detailed grill there. Uh, no hood ornament, no spirit of ecstasy on the top there. Don't know whether it had one originally, probably not. Too small. Once again, no twin headlights on the sides and a nice number plate. I was going to remove the boot, but looking at it, I run the risk of breaking the hinge points if I try and force it apart, so I'm going to leave that. Instead, I'm moving straight on to removal of the plastic windscreen. I'm using this shallow cut drill as a comparison. This uh, reduces the risk of me drilling into the roof and possibly punching through and out the other side or even creating a dimple that would be visible in the end product. It's a close-up for you. I'm not pushing on it, I'm just using the weight of the drill mainly. And once you've gotten the most of it away, sometimes like today, actually that came out easier than normal. Just light finger pressure and sometimes it pops out, but that one just fell out, which is even better. Having a look at it, it's a little bit scuffed up. There's no cracks in it, which is good. So I should be able to polish that up later and try and get it. It probably won't look new, let's be honest, but I'll get it looking better than it does. Now for something different, I'm, uh, I'm using dangerous paint stripper most of the time, so I thought I'd try some of this water-based Bondor paint and varnish stripper. And I'm quite excited to trial a new product. And this is cheaper than the, than the other one, I think and is less dangerous, less caustic, environmentally friendly, ticks a lot of boxes. There's just one box it doesn't tick, uh, only a minor one I guess you could say, and that is it doesn't remove paint. <laughs> so this is like two hours later. Literally, I left it deliberately because I knew it wasn't instantaneous. But two hours later and it hasn't done anything to this enamel paint. So do not go out and buy the Bondol Bondal water-based paint stripper for this hobby because it does not work, not one iota. And I must admit, I, I'll probably put that on the shelf in the shed and never look at it again. So back to my normal polish stripper paint stripper method, which uh, I've used for the last couple of years now. And today, for something different, I'm going to try applying it with a paintbrush. I normally don't do this because in the past, it reacted that quickly that I'd be taking, putting the, the paint stripper on the model and then lifting paint off and putting it in the pot as I'm getting more paint stripper. And the paint stripper would get contaminated. And it's just being me. I don't like contaminated paint stripper in the tin. I like it to be fresh and clean when I dig it out. So I shied away from that for a while, but I thought I'd just give it a go with this to speed things up. Because uh, I'm already two hours behind. And there's a lot to do. After the paint stripper, I'm trying to smooth this model out of any minor imperfections. I'm using some bronze wool which is a fantastic product. It doesn't scour, it just kind of polishes. And um, uh, remember, I'm going to try and put some gold leaf on this. So I'm thinking that's probably good enough. I've, uh, I, I go ahead and I, I paint it, with, uh, clean it with some thinners. And this is the gold metal leaf I've got. And it comes with this sizing, it's called, uh, which is a very thin glue specifically for this thin uh, gold leaf. Now I must say, before I started, I thought if I open the boot, the gold leaf's not going to work, probably. So I've decided to glue the boot shut in on this model, first time ever for me. I'm going to use some poly baking soda and super glue to glue those hinges shut. Uh, as I was saying before, the gold metal leaf, it says it's gold metal leaf, and you think, oh great, I'm buying gold metal leaf. Fact of the matter is, it's fake gold metal leaf. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the real McCoy. And how they can get away with calling it gold metal leaf, I don't know. Anyway, it looks very similar. And to the uninitiated like myself, I actually thought I'd bought the real thing until I did a little bit of research and then realised, no, that's why it was so cheap. Anyway, it's a suitable alternative uh, for people that want to experiment with it. And after I've painted that sizing solution on, remember I said the glue, 
I tried draping a sheet of the gold leaf over. I watched a couple of videos on YouTube on how to use this product. And I didn't know how this would work. Uh, this is my first attempt ever. I tried smoothing it over with a cotton bud. But what I noticed was this very grainy finish on it. You'll see in a minute. I'm using this soft paintbrush. And this, this gold leaf is so thin. It just falls off like... Well, like nothing I've ever seen before. You just touch it with a brush and it just wisps, wisps away and floats to the ground. Um, but as you can see, there's a grain in this. And I realized after I tried this the first time, and this is the first of three attempts, by the way, um, what it's showing on the surface is the actual brush strokes of the glue. Because this stuff must be, I don't know, is it a micron thick? I don't even know. I can't even measure how thick it is. But it is so thick that um, here I'm using a makeup brush because the normal brush was just too brutal on it. So I wasn't happy with that finish uh, of the brush stroke look. I wanted, I was imagining in my mind a glistening gold bar like looking object at the end. So I'm trying a second method here where I'm going to spray the, uh, spray the glue on. I'm going to put an undercoat on of oxide red because I read somewhere that that can make um, the gold look brighter. Well, how that works, I've got no idea, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Again, an experimental model here. I'm learning something new. Hopefully you're watching it and enjoying it and seeing something that's never been shown before. So like I said, I'm going to try and spray this glue on this time around so there's no brush strokes whatsoever. Hopefully the finished model will uh, have my what I desire, a nice solid gold look, like it's like it's been cast in gold, I guess you could say. That's where I'm trying to go. Uh, initially, I was really excited, but I'm starting to get a little bit disheartened now because it's not going as smoothly as I thought. And it's like anything, I suppose. You get better as you go. So this will be the second time. I've applied it a little bit thick there on the roof and bonnet. You have to wait until it turns from white to clear. And then it's just the right tackiness to apply the gold leaf. So I've got to set this aside now for 15 or 20 minutes until that milkiness on the roof there disappears. Now I'm putting on a mask. It's not because I'm scared of catching the virus, because thankfully we're in a virus-free zone at the moment, relatively. Uh, I'm putting it on because otherwise, as I'm breathing, these pre-cut pieces of uh, foil that I'm using this time around. I've cut them to for the panels, individual panels. Uh, before I was getting to them, I was breathing on them and they were shooting off across the table and screwing up into a little crumbly ball that was floating around like an asteroid in space. And I was chucking them in the bin and I'm thinking, <laughs> I didn't buy this stuff to chuck it in the bin. But if you don't use it straight off that uh, greaseproof paper backing, or backing paper, whatever it is, you can't handle it. It just you can't handle the truth no you can't handle the gold leaf because it just falls around falls apart blows away crumbles up and you waste more than you actually use now this is the second attempt and i uh, well at a distance there i thought wow this looks spectacular then i zoomed in with the camera and you can still see every single miniature minor titchy witchy minuscule imperfection in the model and it's mimicked by that very, very thin gold leaf overlay. But hey, that is not too bad. I'm closer to where I want to be. And uh, what I ended up doing was putting little bits of cut off cuts on. And it's that thin that you can't see the joins. So you can build it up in layers over pieces that you over areas you're not happy with. You can build it up gradually one leaf at a time, a little bit at a time, smooth it over with the brush. And when I got it as good as I thought I could, I thought I'd give it a coat. They recommend you coat it with clear varnish to seal the, the gold leaf, stop it tarnishing. But I thought I would use this pearl coat and I'll bake it in the oven. A uh, big mistake, like I said, uh, I did this three times. Well, that was the second one. And the second one was ruined because I put it in the oven. So the third time round, I went again. And what am I doing here now, you're asking yourself? Well, I had two of these models. 
And I thought, well, I've done the gold one, which is what I set out. That was my mission today. So now the second one I'm going to try and restore. Um, not exactly, because I don't have the right paint. But uh, close to what the original one looked like. And uh, I shall have two new Rolls-Royce Silver Ghosts to put into my collection. One red and one gold. The gold one, I must admit, is a bit of a gimmick. And uh, even though the results at the end you'll see are not perfect... It was fun to do and fun to experiment and it's something different which is what I like to show on my channel. I like to try and get something different each time and keep it fresh. So this is the second one there in the background look. You can see the first one I did it's just sitting there waiting to be reassembled. And it looks mighty fine. The base of both models I sprayed with this satin black, uh, black paint out of the spray can. I got myself another one of these Molotow chrome pens because the last one ran out. Ran out on me, so I got a nip down the hobby shop, bought another one of these. They're quite expensive, but it's the best chrome product you can get for modelling, in my opinion. Some people may have found something better. If so, let me know in the comments. Um, these wheels originally were chrome plated because I'm, I guess, I, I'm not rushing it, but I do like to try and get out the odd video every now and again you see and sometimes you have to skip steps and use the tools at hand to speed things up this rather drab dull metal grill I sprayed with some silver paint here's all the plastic parts I cleaned they came up nice look at this I do love the way Matchbox manufactured their stuff this would have come out the mold like that and then the person assembling the model would have folded the dashboard up towards the seats to get it to fit uh, interesting little quirky things like that um, I, I find I find good to, to talk about and to show. So once again, uh, this is an old favourite of mine, the Auto Soul Metal Polish. So I'm back on that again for this project. A few of the r recent ones I've done haven't had windscreen, and I was be beginning to lose the skill of polishing up plastics. So it's a refreshing change for me to have one again with a with a windscreen in it. Like I said at the beginning, very awkward to get these looking mint. The scale of the thing is that you can get it looking 99% mint with the uh, eyeball at a range of 18 inches. It's only when you zoom in with the camera you can see the tiny little imperfections and you know it doesn't look as good as it does in real life. Now. I do recall now how I do this. It's all coming back to me. I use the Long Life Floor Polish. I don't shake it or stir it because I don't want any bubbles in the mixture. I knock off any excess after I've immersed the plastic in it. And I place it in a little onion uh, keeper on a piece of tissue paper. Bonk, like that. And set it aside to harden that. That floor polish hardens in about an hour, I guess. Never really timed it. That's just a ballpark figure. And, um, yeah, it uh, makes the transparencies, uh, gives them a little bit of bling. This uh, suspension piece was curved like a banana, but it was in the, the opposite way. It was bent up, like it had, had the weight of the model sitting on it in the sunshine somewhere on some child's bedroom window. So I thought I'd heat it up with some boiling water. And bend it the other way, and a uh, mistake, this stuff warms up really quick. But when you take it out of the boiling water, it, it also cools down really quick. And as I tried to bend it, it snapped, and I was really, really, really annoyed. So I'm using the second one I had. I'm not making the same mistake twice. I'm going to quickly prefab one of these from a sheet of styrene. Cut it out with my um, X-Acto knife. Drill a hole in the middle. And no one will see it. It will be under, under, on the underside of the model. Hidden inside. Um, I'm, I want to get this done and dusted out of the way. Video uploaded and move on to my next one. Because um, this one's not really what I do. You know, I, I'm, I'm sort of... I don't know, it seemed to take twice... I know there's two models, but it seemed to take twice as long regardless. So if it's two models, it would have taken four, time, uh, four times as long. And uh, I'm just kind of getting over it because each day comes and I think, oh, I'm nowhere near getting this video finished. 
As you may remember from the beginning, this model had no tyres on it. Luckily I got this box of tyres and it's full of tyres that have been generously donated from various uh, viewers from around the world. And I just happen to have a big bag full of the right size tyres, so that's a great fix it and it's handy to have those on standby when you need them. They spin pretty freely and look good on those chromed hubs. So what am I doing now? Well, since it was a custom gold Rolls Royce, I thought I'd have a custom interior. So I've painted this like pig leather grey. Uh, <coughs> I've painted it like this tan pig leather colour. And I've detailed in a few things like seat belts and buckles and the steering wheel and a couple of... Uh, a wood grain dash that looks nothing like wood grain, but you know, had a maiden attempt. And some instruments on the front there. That, again, the base of this one sprayed with the satin black. And I shone those tyres up with a bit of tyre shine. Now I'm trying, I'm going to put this back together and hopefully not pull the, uh, the gold leaf off. Look at the gold leaf inside underneath, it's all crumpled up on itself. So long as it looks good at the end, I'll, um, I'll be pleased. I shall snap that windscreen assembly back in. Before I do, I'll just put a little bit of this clear silicon, just a small blob. And that should prevent it from dropping off um, if the model falls on the floor or something. And it will also enable someone in the future to say, somebody made a balls up of this job, so I'm going to redo it. And they'll uh, pull it apart and take the windscreen out without breaking it. Uh, which I can imagine someone might do because <laughs> I must admit it's just a novelty item that uh, I can say look at that check that out it's gold plated but it's not really but it looks good so I thought I might have problems putting this grill back in because it's kind of there's three attachment points there's the two rivets that I drilled out but there's also a third one coming down from the center of the bonnet that goes into that tongue and it was a little bit of a Chinese puzzle type scenario where you have to put one thing in on an angle, twist it and put the other two things in. But it worked quite well and a couple of drops of super glue should hold that in position. The interior goes back in and the base and the suspension piece there that I broke and had to replace uh, looks exactly the right size. Um, remember at this stage now I forgot to drill the hole in the center pin to allow the pin to come through the center. So I'll just mark it by eye there and check and realize it's wrong so redo it. <laughs> and then I just use this hand chuck with a small drill to give myself a pilot hole. And if it's in the right spot, which I think it might be, I just widened it out with a slightly larger drill and it fits in there quite snug and looks good. Uh, hopefully it will do the job. Now time to put the base back in. Remember there's a tongue there at the front and a rivet at the back that I had to drill out. Well there is no rivet now and there's not enough to put a, a screw in there although in hindsight because I glued the boot shut I probably could have got away with it. Anyway too late now so I opt for two drops of Starbond medium viscosity super glue which is a great product and squeegee the excess around in there by pressing down on the base plate and there is the finished gold plated Rolls Royce. So this is what it looked like when I got it. Very sorry looking model that your kid could not really play with because it had no tires on it. I mean they could push it around but it's more a scrapyard piece. Uh, I don't like to see Rolls Royces at the scrapyard, mind you I never have. And this is what it looks like now. If you remember I said I didn't have the exact matching paint and I put, uh, overcoated this with some pearl clear also and at certain times here you can just see some sparkly little accents there. That's the sparkly stardust I call it in the pearl clear coat. And here's the finished gold leaf model. Now the gold leaf is not really suitable for this type of application and as you can see around the edges it has become a little bit rough in places where I've omitted to just run a toothpick around there. I mean, I went on for ages and ages and ages with this thing. You would not believe how long I spent on it to try and look, make it look good. And this is as good as I got it. Now, if anyone can better it, please, I challenge anyone out there, 
please do another one and uh, I'm gonna do another one I think but I'm gonna try real gold leaf when I can save up enough pennies and I find a source I will buy some real gold leaf and go again and hopefully the uh, the finished thing will look even better than this one Kevin was watching me do this makeover and he said to me that if he ever got invited to the Oscars he would love to go in a gold Rolls Royce I thought to myself maybe I should tell him he's dreaming Hello and welcome to this year's MMM Award Ceremony. Coming to you live from the Princess Theatre in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia. Okay, let's go live now to the celebrity entrance. Oh good, here comes some of this year's nominees for the Best Supporting Actor Award. First up, it's Pandemonium. She is a newcomer to the scene, but is quickly rising in popularity. And she is predicted by many to become very popular in the next 12 months partially to partially due to her good looks and immaculate grooming oh Marty Matchbox is making an appearance this year it looks like Marty is dressed down for today's event but at least he's finally washed his hands by the looks of it who's next I wonder hey hey it's monkey monkey's featured in a few movies in the last 12 months he sure is a snappy dresser he has many fans and there are some rumors that he is into the swinging scene. Go figure. Out the front now, someone's turning up in a gold Rolls Royce. It looks like... Uh, it is! It, it, it's Kevin the Koala! This year, Kevin is considered by many to be the most likely to win the Supporting Actor Award. He's featured in many movies this year. Let's have a quick look at his most controversial spa scene, which shook Hollywood at the time. Hey, is, he, is he doing some spray painting or something? What? What is this? Kevin! Okay, the results win, and the judges are unanimous in their decision. This year's winner of the MMM Best Supporting Actor Award of 2020 is... Kevin! Congratulations to Kevin! Commiserations to the other nominees, all of whom were worthy of an award, but... As always, there can only be one true winner. So, let's all show our appreciation for Kevin the Koala. Yay! Go Kevin! So, until next time, this is Marty saying, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!